Warning, me time and murder is intended for mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. <laughs> oh, for God's sake, here Dancing it goes. around him, reciting <laughs> poetry. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh my God. That's crazy. No, why? <laughs> oh, well, big surprise. Oh God. <laughs> Dead on the bathroom floor. <gasps> Did it? It's okay. Oh. <laughs> So, Trez, what are you drinking? Okay, I am drinking a Barry's Tea Lemon and Ginger. Uh, Barry's Tea, another southern thing that I was unaware of. It's almost like Thompson's Tea, but in the south it has the same kind of um, status. People really like Barry's Tea down here. Actually, do you know what? I think it's a Cork thing. It's not a southern thing. Oh, is it? But it's, it's a, a nice strong tea. Their their caffeinated tea is really nice. Um, oh. but their lemon and ginger is it's good as well. It's it's nice and strong. What about you, Miriam? What are you drinking? I have. I also have ginger. You're drinking ginger, yeah? Oh, nice. It is, it is the no. I have oh. the pucka. I have <gasps> reached into my my care package that I received like a few months ago. I only dip in now and again because like I don't have that many left. So I've got the yeah. Pukka 3 Ginger. Oh, I love that one. Mm. So what I did was I made a cup of tea like an hour ago and I, I let it cool on the yeah. table for ages. And then I have like a big, like a, you know, those in America have they have like big gulps. We have like a Mexican restaurant that sells tea in those like massive, like, wow, really? like solo cups, massive. I just reuse that and I put like loads and loads of ice in it and then I put my tea on top so it's like an iced tea. Oh wow. It's like an iced ginger, three ginger tea. You can hear Oh, yeah, oh I can hear the ice. Yeah. It sounds so appealing. Yeah, it's really nice. It's starting to heat up over here in Hong Kong so it's time for iced tea for me. Wow. Yeah, so. And it actually works well. I've never had like cold ginger tea but you know what? I recommend. It is nice. I used to, um, I used to have it with like fizzy water mm. but it, it's hard to steep the bag in cold water so yeah it is better to th- have it hot first and then let it cool yeah you sort of have to like plan but I think it's worth yeah. it yeah oh yeah no it's definitely mm-hmm. worth it. and what about your me time uh I'm gonna do a, a little hair mask it's very similar to the one that I sent you over I can't remember that brand it was in super drug this one's from boots it's the Aussie staycation hair mask and cap moisture paradise so it's like the caps in one side of the compartment and then there's another compartment that's just like the the actual like um mask itself Mm -hmm. so I think it's a great idea it's probably a bit wasteful most people have a a hair a shower cap at home (laughs) you know it's kind of more plastic that we don't really need oh you have to throw it away it's kind of a gimmick, but there's something about the compartments that, I don't know, appeal to me. And it's just, it's, you know, it's just like an all-in-one and it's just so easy to use. It's like mm-hmm. a convenience one, really. But mm-hmm. I don't use them all the time. Um, but yeah, I'm going to see what it's like. Yeah, I, uh, because, like, like I was talking about my big gulp, like I already used it. It's just like so plasticky. I have such guilt throwing mm. it out after using I know, yeah, it one yeah, time. What are you going to do? Yeah, I suppose you just have to throw it out. And I'm just like, no, I'm just going to wash it and use it again. So I'll probably, because I have such guilt. I'm just like, why couldn't they just give it to me in a paper cup? Like, I know. My fuck? issue with the reusable plastic, though, is this the BPA. I thought That's that was illegal thing. to make. No, a plastic can still have BPA in it. Can it? Oh, gosh, yeah. Like over here, like lunch boxes and stuff, unless it says BPA free. That's my oh. only issue. Oh my goodness, there's like an office. This is we're going way off topic here. But there's an <laughs> office building that I walk past on my way to work and there's this office that have their like water containers sitting in the window in direct sunlight. Oh and God. I'm just like, "Oh my god." Like to the pla- and it's those crappy plastic mm. bottles that mm. definitely have BPA. It's like you're mm. just cooking your water and like cooking the plastic yeah freaks me out I get really freaked out about stuff like that yeah no me too yeah like especially lunch boxes because you reuse them so much yeah you know 
this but is for you. I'd say if you but, use that thing a few times, you'd be fine. Maybe put your makeup brushes in it or something. Or... But I was trying to be all like eco and sustainable and stuff. And I was like, I'm buying a glass lunchbox. What happened? It smashed. It smashed. In work. Pure mortified. That's the worst. Embarrassing. I had to pick it all up. And people came into the lunchroom as well. And they're like looking at me. And I'm like, i sorry. I buy plastic. I tried. I tried. <laughs> I tried. Yeah. It, it, like. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I tried it myself with um, a glass water bottle, and it had like a silicone coating. Still, to nah, like it know, just breaks inside the silicone. But it But then it still will break. Yeah. <laughs> so I just always felt so cautious uh-huh. with it, and I was so uh-huh. careful about putting it in my handbag, and uh-huh. I just felt nervous all the time. It was giving me nerves, so I was just uh-huh. like, nope. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, if you just get a nice BPA-free lunchbox, Dan doesn't get it. Well, for my me time, I did it yesterday for research, so I'm not doing anything. Uh, I'm going to, I'll probably just take off my makeup while I talk. Mm-hmm. So yesterday, I don't know if you've seen, I put up on the Instagram, I was doing a milky foot. I see did, that. Did you see first, that? At first, I couldn't figure out what it was, and then when I seen it on your foot, I understood. <laughs> But the packaging yeah. is very confusing right so uh-huh. like uh my friend in hong kong she says it's like really good because i was like because we do yoga and like you look down at your feet and you're like oh god it's just like hard skin dry skin mm-hmm. other people have to look at my feet so she was just like oh just get this here it's like a little like exfoliator for your feet it's a little sock and i was like what are you talking about Basically, you put your foot inside the, this little plastic sock and it's got AHA. Alpha hydroxy acid. So that's exfoliating the skin. Yes. The dead skin cell. Yeah. Cells. So you wear the Milky Foot intensive foot pad on both feet. Duh. Oh, I didn't tape it. Shit, I didn't tape it. Oh, yeah. To like keep the moisture in or whatever. Keep the heat in. in. Okay. Yeah. Right. That it might probably would have worked better. Damn it. So it says it's kind of gross when you think about it. <laughs> it says soak your feet in the foot pad for 45 to 60 minutes. See, I read that bit. 45 to 60 minutes? Yeah. What do you do during all that time? Well, I was like writing this episode. Okay, that's all yeah. right. But for some people, they don't have time yeah. for that. But like, yeah, so I sat there and I was just like, well, Mariam has really hard skin on her feet. So I left it on for like an hour and a half and my foot was starting to sting. And I was like, oh, Oh. no. (laughs) Because I was going to say, if it was me, I'd be super lazy and I'd be like, oh, just put it on overnight and go to sleep. But (laughs) it's probably bad. Oh, God. And so what's the result? So I did it yesterday or was it the day before? And so far, fucking nothing. Uh, Like I'm like, because apparently like a day or two later, your feet like peel. You know when you do like a acid on your face yes. like a peeling and then like it's like not immediate it's like a day later yeah yeah and then yeah. your skin flakes off nothing i, know, I hate that because it's such a gamble because sometimes i have to go out in yeah. public and i'm like no <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah it's hard to know and it's like, worse it when you're wearing much. makeup and you're wearing makeup and it makes it like the flaky skin look super flaky oh it's the like worst big sometimes it's better not to put off. on makeup the makeup yeah. accentuates the dryness it does it does and then it leaves like a big patch yeah of like the worst. skin maybe you just have to use this a few times or maybe it's just not strong enough <sighs> maybe it's because i didn't tape it up like so it maybe. said on it like it's better if you wear a sock so i did have socks on over it okay damn it, i didn't yeah, tape you would it. think that would have been enough it is possible that it oxidized Damn it. I'm sorry. I'll do it again and report back. Yes, keep us updated. Trust your feet. Yeah. Very intrigued. I don't know. I can't be the only person with hard skin in their feet. No, definitely not. Um, It's, yeah, it sucks. I've done it before with the whole, like, put the moisturizer on and then put a sock on and sleep in it, but it just feels really gross in between your toes. It just creeps me out. I don't like. Well, not just the moisture. It. Oh, just for like, but like I. I have, used like, to do really... that, and I used to do it with my hands. I put on these gloves on my hands, and I was like, "What age are you?" I was probably like eighteen, and I was like, putting on <laughs> gloves at night. But, like, my wrinkles. It just felt horrible. I don't know. I'd say so it just that's the sense of it was. Uh, but anyway, anyway, let's start. So I am going to tell you the story of Elizabeth Margaret McNally. Have you heard of her? don't know her 
Okay, I'll tell you about her. Elizabeth Margaret McNally was born in 1859 in Antrim. Go on, Antrim. Mm. Oh, she's a Northern Irish girl like us. Mm -hmm. When Elizabeth was five years old, the Irish Catholic family of 12. Wow. Totes normal back then, though. Yes, 12. Mm. Two parents and 10 kids. (laughs) They all up and moved to New York City. Oh, wow. Exciting. God, how... Mm -hmm. So, like, to afford to bring over all those children, they must have yeah. saved up for a while. Well, I think it was also kind of, it was kind of cheap. If you have ten kids, you might not be. Well, it depends how wealthy they are, I suppose. But I suppose now, like a little bit like my sister Trez, Elizabeth had a violent temper when she was younger. Ha ha ha! <laughs> <laughs> so what? She's five. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. When she's five, okay. yeah. So it's not the terrible twos, it's the... (laughs) I can't think of anything. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So uh, her violent outburst didn't stop when she was a kid, though. They continued and got worse. She ended up having a bad reputation in New York. And in her teenage years, she got into physical altercations, even with her family members. And this eventually led to them being estranged. So New York did not want to know this very angry Irish chick. So she ended up bumming around eastern states and soon she landed in Scranton, Pennsylvania. No way. No, I don't know where she ended up, but it was definitely oh. Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> she was in Pennsylvania somewhere. That's all I know about Pennsylvania is, that is okay. Scranton. Same. Scranton. So in 1879, she's about 20 years old and she falls in love and marries Charles Hopkins. The couple went on to have one son, but tragically, Charles dies suddenly after only two years of marriage. Oh. Mm. The couple Wait, did have... Did she kill him? <laughs> You're suspicious already. I am, I am. A probably young man. Right, yeah, she's only 20. He's probably young as well. What's he dying from? The couple had one son. So poor Elizabeth is 20 years old and a widow, but not for long. She got back on her feet and married again. No stopping her. She married Artemis Brewer. Oh my God, I love that name, Artemis. Artemis is a pretty cool name. I love those kind of old-timey names. Are you going to call your child Artemis? Definitely not, but I can appreciate it. (laughs) from afar <laughs> it's a very cool name I suppose like women back then as well was she working like a lot of time women kind of had to marry for like status and protection and you know income Money, and stuff income yeah yeah survival yeah mm-hmm. that's a really good point and a few months later what happened to poor Artemis oh no yeah Artemis are they dying and- in the same way it's not recorded how they died. Okay. But, like, he died suddenly and mysteriously. Wow. Just, Very like, out of the blue. Is she taking their money? Well, they are married, legally. Okay, so, so yeah, so she gets yes. the money in. Okay. Yeah. Probably yeah. wasn't such a thing as a prenup back then. I don't think so. <laughs> okay. But don't worry. Elizabeth's string of bad luck is about to change when she marries... Hiram Parkinson. Oh, just makes me think of Riverdale. Hiram. <laughs> oh, yeah, Hiram Lodge. Yeah. 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 Hiram is never seen again. <gasps> <laughs> Only weeks after the wedding, he's gone. He disappears off the weeks. face of the earth. Weeks. She needs to calm down. She needs to take a breath, take a beat. <laughs> Civil War veteran George Smith was husband number four. Now, you know how we love our tea on. Me time and murder. Mm-hmm. Um, we love a fruity tea or a savoury turmeric tea. Love it. Well, a few months into marriage, Elizabeth got her wee husband a very savoury tea, arsenic flavoured tea. <laughs> oh my god! What does arsenic taste like? Well, I wrote down it was savoury, but isn't there something about uh, almonds or almond oh, savoury? Oh, you're right. Yeah. Or maybe it just smells like almonds. Smells. Like... Yeah, there's a way of detecting it all right. Mm. George took sick but managed to survive. And he knew it was Elizabeth. Oh. 
Before he could bring her to justice, Elizabeth had already fled with all his money. So now Elizabeth is on the run and she appears in Vermont. And with she didn't she didn't have a child with any of these men. She had a child with the first one. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um they lasted two years. Two years. I wonder if she's taking the child on the run? Yes. The child oh. is with her this whole time. Okay. This has been going on for about seven years. Wow. Yeah. So she's like marrying and then killing them and then like living off their money until it mm-hmm. runs out and then marrying again, it seems like. So what, what was it? So when in Vermont, Elizabeth marries Charles Playstein. Do you think it will work this time? Probably not. No. She leaves him two weeks after the wedding. But doesn't kill him. I don't think so. Okay. Now, it is 1887 and our girl is 29. Elizabeth McNally is in Philadelphia and is now going by her first married name, Maggie Hopkins. Perhaps looking for female camaraderie or to replace her estranged family, she befriends two Irish immigrant sisters, Margaret and Sarah McQuillan. Using the money she stole from all of her previous husbands, Elizabeth and the McQuillan sisters set up a shop. Hmm. She's decided she's go on the straight and narrow. What's the shop? I'm not too sure what the shop was, but hmm. she burnt it down anyway for an insurance scam. Oh, stop it. <laughs> oh, okay, so she hasn't really changed. No. Turns out work is hard. <sighs> no shit. It's easy just to like... Kill people and burn buildings. Yeah, take their money. On St. Patrick's Day, whoo, 1888, Elizabeth was convicted of arson and sent to the Eastern State Penitentiary for two years. Ooh. Now, Elizabeth's son had been following her during these escapades and marriages around the US. So he ended up just being sent to a juvenile institution mm-hmm. because he apparently too was very violent and oh, angry. Dear like his mom when elizabeth was released she began working as a housekeeper for elderly twice widowed 70 year old paul halliday who lived in a farm in upstate new york do you know where upstate new york is not really but i've heard that they say it all the time in the movies i know i don't really know what that means is it the state at the top of the state like or is a town called upstate I just thought it meant like the northerly part, like up near the top. <laughs> That's what I think. But is there maybe a town called Upstate? Uh, it says, when I look it up, it says region in New York State. Still doesn't oh. really help me. It's all one word. It's not Upstate, it's Upstate. Yeah, okay. A geographical region. Can... Okay. Mm. In, ni- in, eight- in 1890, they marry. And Elizabeth started going by Lizzie Halliday. This is the name for which she would go down. This became her legal name from here on. But we'll keep calling her Elizabeth because that's what we know her as. Mm -hmm. After a year of wedding bliss, on May 6th, 1891, Elizabeth burned down a portion of the Halliday family home. Only 20 days later, she burned down one of the barns and then proceeded to take all of her husband's workhorses to town and sold them without his oh knowledge. <gasps> it is said that Elizabeth also lashed out at her stepsons and on several occasions publicly threatened to kill her husband. Oh my God. In 1893, Elizabeth burned down her husband's mill while his son John was inside. Dear God. Mm. Did he die? Yes. John was disabled and was not able to escape the fire. Oh, okay. This yeah. person is evil. Okay, obviously everything else was evil, but this yes. is really evil. Yeah. To like burn alive. I mean, why? Oh, for money. It's all know, for like insurance money. I know, yeah. but like, why does he have to go down in inside it? Like, did she want to get rid of him? The son? Hmm. It seems like it. Hmm. So Elizabeth was arrested. But the courts find that Elizabeth was the courts find that Elizabeth was not guilty by reason of insanity. So she was sent to an asylum instead. Now I had no idea 
the wonders asylums were doing in the late 1800s, but apparently they were able to cure Elizabeth in only a few months. Wow. Amazing. After burning down the holiday home, barn, and killing the son, she was released. Deemed oh fit for society. Probably just wanna, didn't want to keep paying for her. <laughs> Probably. After she was released, she made her way back up to Paul Holiday's farm and he mysteriously disappeared. Oh, God. Seen that coming? Neighbours and the Holiday family members had seen Elizabeth at the back of the farm around the same time as his sudden disappearance. So they were fearing the worst and so they contacted the police. When the police came to the Holiday farm, Elizabeth claimed that he had gone to a nearby town to like do masonry work for a while and that's why he wasn't there. Police didn't believe her so they went and obtained a police search warrant. They came back to the farm, knocked on the door like we're coming in, we're going to search the house. Mm -hmm. They started looking around, looking for Mr. Holiday or some kind of evidence that there was foul play or that he did go to the local town. So while they're in the barn, they find a body and another body. But it wasn't Mr. Holiday. It was the bodies of Margaret and Sarah McQuillan. <gasps> the two Irish cutties yeah, that she that had she made friends with. Went into business with. Just two sisters trying to support each other, opening up a shop. Maybe they were also in it for the insurance money, but things went sour. Mm-hmm. The sisters were buried under hay in one of the barns. Both had been shot. While police were still searching the Holiday farmhouse, a putrid smell started coming from beneath the floorboards. It got stronger and stronger by the day. They ripped open the floorboards and there they found Paul Holiday underneath. Oh, God. He too had been shot in the head and his body had been horrifically mutilated. Ugh. When questioned at the police station, Elizabeth declared, seen by doctors at the asylum, tore off all her clothes, started running around the police station and babbled nonsensically. She was doing that on purpose, though. That is what some people thought. Mm -hmm. Some thought she was faking it so she could go back to the asylum. I'd say so. I mean, like, to marry so many people and kill so many people and keep moving, you have to have your wits about you. Yeah, totally. While in custody, Elizabeth refused to eat or talk. Elizabeth attempted to kill herself. She sliced her throat with a broken glass bottle. Cheekers. Brutal, right? And when that failed, she tried to hang herself. Then, when that failed, she set fire to her bed. Oh my god. Eventually, the workers at the prison had to restrain her 24 hours a day by chaining her to the prison cell floor. Cheekers. The media was infatuated by this young Irish black widow burning down houses and speaking in gibberish and running around with her clothes off. Yeah, they'll have a field day with that. (laughs) Some papers claimed that she had killed in Belfast before fleeing to the United States. Wait, was she not born in... No, wait. What age was she when she... Oh, right, okay. I I assumed that the kids were all really young. They were. She was five. (laughs) Yeah. So how did she kill in Belfast? <laughs> oh, she was a very angry child. Okay, okay. While some papers claimed that she was Jack the Ripper's protege. I mean, that's just nonsensical, but okay. <laughs> Elizabeth is about 35 years old. Her murder trial attracted swarms and swarms of media from America and beyond. People coming from Ireland, obviously, and Europe. On June 21st, 1894... Elizabeth McNally was convicted. She was the first woman to be sentenced to death by electric chair. Oh. Mm -hmm. The media went crazy. There's still a lot of people who think that, like, I don't know, like, women can't be executed. Seems like a man's thing, almost. That's weird, but punishment fits the crime. Not that I agree with death penalty, but, like, I don't see what gender has got to do with it. Definitely not. Yeah. Upon hearing the verdict, Elizabeth lunged for the sheriff and bit him on the hand. Oh, God. In the courtroom. Okay. Well, she shouldn't be able to do that. I know. 
She's crazy, just biting him on the hand. The poor sheriff, this arm got infected and later had to be amputated. Oh, I know. What's wrong with her mouth? What's wrong? Her teeth are so <laughs> dirty. <laughs> Sounds messed uh, up. You know, I actually knew this guy. This is off topic. I knew this guy and he was drunk and he got into a fight and he punched a guy in like the face. He punched a guy in the mouth and the guy's teeth like ripped, it like tore open his finger. Yeah. And he didn't think anything of it. He thought that they just got into a fight and he just sort of like put a plaster on and went went about and then like over like the week his finger got worse and worse and worse and it started to just like go like and he had to go in and they were like it's full of blood and it was like yeah it was deteriorating and it like damaged like the muscle and the tendons stop yeah and he had to go in for like surgery oh my god yeah they had to like put local anesthetic on his hand and they had to like remove like all of this muscle and tendons and skin and then I put like a little mini skin graft and like sew it all back up and apparently like he'll never regain like he lost like 40 percent or like a lot of like flexibility like it doesn't completely bend that's ridiculous isn't that crazy just from like he punched a guy in the tooth and it fucked up his finger (sighs) forever don't punch people yeah violence is never the answer Anyway, so America was outraged that a woman who many thought was insane was being sentenced to death. No way. So the media was furious, like, no, this cannot happen. No, stop it. No. You sound like Kevin Hart. (laughs) No. (laughs) No. (laughs) No. Isn't Isn't he pretending to be... His daughter on the trampoline. (laughs) No. I can't remember what the story is. Oh, God, I love him. (sighs) He is so funny. So the New York governor decided it was unseemly to execute a woman who may have a mental issue, problem, who Mm. who might be unstable. She's got something Yeah, it'd be bad luck to do that. Yeah. Still want to be pretty sure. Yeah. So he commuted her sentence to life in a mental institution. Okay. So yeah, she was the f- yeah. enough. She was the first woman to be sentenced, but she wasn't the first woman to be like executed right. with the electric chair. Elizabeth was sent to a state hospital for the criminally insane. There she remained for the rest of her life. She kill anyone when she was in there. But the story's not over. Okay. In 1906, Elizabeth Stole a pair of scissors. No. Then jumped on a nurse. No. Nurse Ellie Wicks and stabbed her 200 times. <sighs> See, maybe she is insane. <laughs> yeah, they're just really, really angry or insane. But right? there's a fine line, isn't there? I mean, how... Oh. I know, right? She. I mean, yeah. what did the nurse even do to her with the husbands there was a reasoning mm. you know there was like a tactical thing For going money. on but this is just yeah. pure rage it's uh, yeah i don't think yeah. she was all there god love her so in all elizabeth mcnally had married six times by the time she was 30 wow two husbands died suddenly two husbands disappeared one was shot dead she killed her stepson in a fire she shot two irish women and stabbed a nurse. She poisoned a husband, and her own son was institutionalised. She just, like, left a path of destruction. Yeah. Elizabeth Margaret McNally died on the 28th of June, 1918. She was buried in an unmarked grave on the grounds of the State Hospital. She was described by the New York Times at her death as the worst woman on earth. Oof. Oof. And that's the end. Wow. What a... What a loser. (laughs) I know, it's like... It wasn't justified in any of that. Not that anyone ever is. But it just... There wasn't a good enough reason ever. No. You know? Yeah. And she just kept doing it. I suppose she was Mm. getting away with it. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. Back then, it was probably hard to pin things on people. I was surprised they were able to pin the fire on her. Because yeah, oh, she was would, 
just stood there like maybe she made it obvious I don't know but anyway shall we end it let's end this um we'll see you on the next one guys slana walia bye six times by the time she was 30 wow i haven't even got a ring yet i was just gonna say that as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy hurry up i'm sending vibes hurry up yeah jaren everybody mentally give him the message just like send the signals out to him send vibes he'll get it he'll pick it up eventually it has to be more expensive than his guitar the ring yes our guitars that's this really stupid question i feel like to say our guitar is expensive <laughs> well they're not cheap there's a range i'm sure there's a range <laughs> oh no he has a good guitar does he okay yeah. i agree i am in agreement with that it should be more than the guitar uh, yeah but then do you know expensive engagement rings freak me out because you wear that every single day and it, yeah. it's like you're just carrying around a load of money is i crazy? hate carrying like few hundred in my purse i get really yeah. paranoid <laughs> yeah same it is scary i don't know scary but everybody agrees with me like whenever he's spent like the ridiculous amount of money on his guitar i was just like mm-hmm. you realize that you have to spend more on my ring he's yeah like, he set the bar now yeah and he's like what i was like it has to be the most expensive thing you've ever bought at that <laughs> okay at well, that point you're making up these rules <laughs> it's supposed to be <laughs> two is it two months wage or three months i can't remember is it three months i don't know it's a few months wage i remember in the office he Michael said three Scott years thought it was like two or three years salary <laughs> <laughs> but yeah a few months yeah. to, be, to me i'm actually i i'm not precious about it because i think i would just be freaked out if it was really expensive no, I probably lose it. I, I never wear jewelry, and you're the same. So same. you'd take it off, and you would, you know, go on. If you're doing yoga, or you're in the shower, or you're yeah. I think you're not supposed to take it off, but like people do, you do take it off. So I think I'd be very precious with it. I don't think I would take it to yoga and stuff. Like in case I was to drop I it know, in the but shower, then, like you leave it at home, and then what if it gets misplaced? I don't know. Somebody's gonna break in and just. I go feel like take I would ring. lose it eventually. I know it's very scary. But yeah, but basically every single person I talk to, I'm just like, obviously, like if you buy a car, like that's different. It's like, yeah, that's a necessity or a house that's different. But like for like a luxury item, Mm -hmm. it has to me, it's like it has to be the most expensive luxury item to that point. I get the logic. I get the logic. You know, you can't spend less on me than you have on yourself. Everybody agrees except for Jaren. Jaren's like, what? No way. I didn't know these rules. And I was just like, well, you should have bought such <laughs> an ex- not, not rules, but <laughs> I was like, you should have bought such him. an expensive guitar then. I'll get Dan to say, oh no, Jaren, everyone knows that's the rule. And he'll just be like, oh my God. <laughs> I had no idea. Well, everybody I've talked to who has proposed or like yes it's like the most expensive thing I've oh bought. really you, like the you know like uh yeah that's not a necessity item that's I not yeah, yeah 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 like a, like a one-off I purchase it would be yeah. well like mm. you see does a laptop count well, how much are you spending on your laptops Tris? well like max can be expensive maybe the same price yeah we're worth it <laughs> that's the bottom line no I, I tease him but I'm just really telling him that he can't be cheap yeah. Oh no 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 no. We'll set it back. It's another <laughs> it office back. reference. If it's I too cheap, I will send it back. <laughs> if it's too expensive, I will send it back. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guys, like they they don't even know like what shape or what color and then no, they have to think about price. Yeah, yeah. They're clueless when it comes to all of that. If it's gold, I send it back. If <laughs> <laughs> if it has a love hard shape on it, I send it back. I send it back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, some some shapes I'm not gone on. Not that I don't think there's many love hard shapes, but like some shapes, I'm like, oh god, no. Is love anyway. a real shape? I thought it was like a. It's tear. not. I don't think I so. Like... No, I say he probably could get one. Oh, probably. Me time and murder would like to thank and acknowledge our sources that make this podcast possible. References can be found on our Instagram page.